Hi, I'm Monica Bravo. I teach at California College of the Arts. And I'm Kim Beal. I teach at Stanford University. Today, we are going to look at Leaf Reedlanders, The Little Screens. This book was published in 2001 by Frankel Gallery, and it takes a series of photographs made by Friedlander in 1962 and 1963, which were originally published in Harper's Bazaar. So there were originally just six pictures, and they included a comment by Walker Evans. He described Friedlander's pictures as deft, witty, spanking little poems of hate. I think this first photograph is so amazing, and it reminds us that, sure, we are looking at the screen, but we are also being watched by the camera. I love this image. This is a fantastic visual rhyme between the arms of the chair and the legs of the woman in the exercise class. And it's also surprising because taking pictures of television was actually fairly difficult in 1962 or 63. As late as the 1950s, there were how-to instructional articles in magazines like Popular Science that told people that they had to slow down the shutter speed in order to capture the cathode ray tube image as it passed across the screen. So here, Friedlander's using a slow shutter speed to record something that may be happening quickly, but at least since we know it's an exercise class, she's going to do this pose multiple times. Yeah, now it's so easy with streaming to just fast forward and rewind, but then it's like it flashes by in a moment. This is the first self-portrait that we see in this book, and it's not a flattering selfie. Instead, we see Friedlander looking down at his own body, and specifically his legs and feet, which mirror that on the screen. And then as another pun, we have the antenna on top of that television set that mirror that shape of the legs. It's a reminder that there's another body present, uh, and in fact, a single body present in front of these screens. I think that speaks to the next image too. And this is something that I love about Friedlander's work, that he's flattening representations and real life. So we have an image of the woman's face on screen, but we have a real object in the room. And I think when he puts them together, they're combined through the work of the flash. And again, maybe another uh, verbal pun this time, this could be a bureau or a chest of drawers. This photograph, I think, is so remarkable because the television takes on an anthropomorphic character, uh, as do the chairs. We begin to think of them as having a personality of their own. It reminds us, too, a photograph like this, that televisions were furniture. Now screens are so mobile. You probably are watching this on a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop that can easily change its place. Uh, versus then, the little screens that uh, Friedlander was photographing were not so little. So many of these photographs have this kind of cold and sterile sense to them. And of course, when you go into a hotel room, one of the first things you might do is turn on the television for company. And perhaps now, when so many of us are sheltering out in place or maybe even living alone during COVID, we still use the television for company. And I think it's remarkable that even though Friedlander was bored and alone in a hotel room, he was still thinking about how to do creative work. I think this longer edit uh, in the book is fantastic because you get a sense of repetition with a difference. And the question is always, is he going to these places multiple times or is this one roll of film with many different shots on it? So we're back in the room with the chair and the exercise program, it's suddenly it's a very different feeling than that rhyming image before. Yeah, I think there's an element of eroticism in a photograph like this. It's a reclining nude. You know, the images that come into our lives through the television can really change the tenor of the room. We've seen a room like this before, but it seems different according to who's on the screen. And I think of that a lot now. You never know what's going to come up um, next, maybe on the evening news or you know, even on whatever Netflix is going to recommend. There's also a sense that the same screen is used for so many different p purposes at a time like this. When we're using our personal screens for things like work as well as for 
for entertainment and even friendships and social engagement. This photograph, I can't help but reading as a crib with the baby being enclosed by the footboard. And it makes me think about what is being kept in and what is being kept out. When Saul Anton reviewed this book, uh, he interpreted this um, and the whole series as a kind of family portrait. And we see in the original six pictures, a man and a woman and a child. But this reminds me today of um, the many children that can pop up in Zoom meetings uh, when everyone is working from home. And here again is one of those wonderful inverted images, something that we have become familiar with and suddenly we see it with a difference. Whereas before the woman was laughing and it seemed like an incredibly comic image, now she's crying. Yeah, maybe it suggests the downside of television and screens that the the same thing that can bring us joy and happiness can also lead to frustration and even loneliness. Well, there it is, little screens. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Kim.